Today I'm painting a master copy of Bouguereau's Psyche. I'm starting by analyzing the image in Photoshop and using the color picker to dissect some of the colors from the skin tones. This will help me when I'm ready to mix my palette. Here are the resulting colors arranged in three values. Here's a look at my actual palette next to the analyzed colors. And now I'm ready to paint. I've divided my 12 by 12 canvas into equal quarters. And then I also put the guidelines on my photo reference as well, and they match my canvas exactly. So everything I see on my computer monitor matches exactly the same size as to what I am painting on my canvas. I am starting here with the right eye, which is in the shadow side. That's why this looks so dark, especially on the white canvas. So I have no initial drawing. Uh, the only marks on my canvas are the uh, quarter size grid lines. And I literally just put down a brush stroke for the pupil, which is what I started with. And then the other brush strokes build out from there. This is a selective start method. You can learn all about selective start with uh, Richard Schmidt's book, A La Prima 2. I'll leave a link in the description. So if you saw the video just before this one that I released last week, I am doing this Bouguereau master copy in order to prepare myself to really have a good handle on painting the painting that I'm going to be working on. Uh, it's a new painting in a series I'm calling Tea with Alice. And I really wanted to have a, a masterful um, Bouguereau type uh, look to it, but with modern flares. So let's see if I can pull that off. But in order to be ready to do that, I felt I needed to do another Bouguereau master copy. This is the third one that I've done. And I feel like each one brings me closer to the skin tone handling and skill level that I wanna be at. I mean, really, I should probably do this like a hundred times over to be anywhere near as good as Bouguereau. But each time I do it, I do feel like I get a little bit better and I learn something from every single master copy that I complete. So Bouguereau's Psyche has a look and a feel to it that I really want my painting uh, to have as well. That's why I chose it. So let's pull up the image here next to my painting and we'll get a look at how the eyes coming along. The colors are a little difficult. It's hard to match the lighting in the studio to what is been photographed in the, um, it's the ARC Museum where I get my high definition references from, especially for Bouguereau, they have a lot to choose from. And it's difficult to really show you the correct skin tone colors. The lighting in the studio just makes it very difficult to capture that, especially while the paint is wet. But I'll do my best. But you can see here that the drawing and the values are in the correct place. And that's the most important thing because we can always adjust the skin tones uh, later on. The big thing that I see happening with Bouguereau's uh, portraits are the transitions from where he moves from the light areas towards the mid value areas and then further on into the shadow areas. His transitions are so subtle. And that is something that I've been focusing on in the last three master copies that I've done. I really want to get a good handle on walking from the light to the dark, not by br blending the colors into one another, but by actually laying down new colors. Here I'm going to just hold my paintbrush up and make sure that the eyes are level. You can see here that they should be directly in line with one another. And then I use my proportion tool to check the distance from the inside pupil to the opposite inside pupil. That's a very important measurement to get right. And then I just quickly checked the width of each pupil there. Remember, my computer monitor has the image of the Bureau Psych zoomed in to exactly the same size of what I'm painting on my canvas so I can compare them one to one. It is thought that Bouguereau would start his paintings with a reddish brown colored underpainting. I have decided to go right on top of the white canvas today. 
uh, the last couple of master copies that I did, I did have a reddish brown underpainting, but I just wanted to see what it would be like to do that on a white canvas. When I'm finished, I'll let you know my thoughts on which was better. Um, it's hard to say at this point. So there's two really big things to remember when you're painting eyes. You don't want any hard edges and the whites of the eyes are never white. And if you need some help with eyes, I have just the thing for you. I've put together a little thank you for everyone that's been supporting my channel. Go and get your free How to Paint Eyes tutorial today. Would you like to see this eye tutorial in real time, full length with all the tips and tricks along the way? Then all you have to do is um, go to the link in the description and put in your email, first name, click the button, and the full length free How to Paint Eyes tutorial will be on its way to you. So I'm working in life size, pretty close to it. It's one of my favorite sizes to paint. I'm going to be working on some smaller paintings coming up and that'll give me a chance to maybe get a little bit better with painting smaller faces. Hey, if you wanna help the channel and you're getting some value, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And also hit the subscribe button and come along with me on my art journey. I'm going to be uploading new portrait driven videos every week on Saturday mornings, Eastern Standard Time, about 8.30 a.m. Maybe you have questions about portrait painting or there's something that you'd like me to cover. I'd love to hear from you in the description. Go ahead and leave your comments and I'll be sure to let you know I read them. Now that I have the eyes pretty well laid in, I feel like the anatomy and the drawing are good, I'm gonna work on refining the transitions. Every little um, tile of color needs to transition into the adjoining tile of color seamlessly. So we're just gonna be going back over, reworking the area and making sure that that's happening. So our transitions are going to be moving from the light areas into the darker areas seamlessly. So we're gonna complete this area of the eyes before moving on to the nose or the forehead because we're going to be using the position of the eyes as comparative measurements for the rest of the facial anatomy. So I've been working on this area a pretty long time and I think I'm gonna take a break. So I like to have a stopping point here, like in the cheek area. So when I do start back, in case the paint's gotten a little bit dry or tacky, the area that I'm going to be attaching isn't a hard edged cut area. Like if I'd stopped at the bottom of an eye or if I stop exactly at the bottom of the nose, I like to stop where there's soft uh, endings on the face so that when I can get back to painting, I know I can work up to those areas more seamlessly.
So let's check in with our reference and see that the nose and the eyes are looking pretty good as far as the drawing goes. I feel like they do, so let's carry on. So I'm establishing the ear and it's also helpful to put that area in and a little bit of the side of the hair so you can compare your skin tone values and kind of the tone of the skin next to those darker colors. It can be helpful. Remember ears have a lot of blood flow in them so feel free to really punch up the red in your skin tones whenever you're painting ears. I've been excited to get to the lips, so I'm checking the distance from this part of the nose to where the lips will begin. And I'm just going to go ahead and start putting in some of that upper lip. And just remember when you're painting lips, no hard edges. With each brush stroke that I'm using here to form the lips, I'm really thinking about the, the how the structure is laying out. Is it smooth? Is it round? Is it curving under away from the light? Is it rolling outwards towards the light? I really want to capture the volume of the lip and with each brush stroke I'm just thinking about what the landscape is that the brush strokes laying down over as if it were really her lip. So the oil paint colors that I mixed for the lips, uh, I used Vermilion Deep, Cadmium Red Light, a touch of Manganese Blue, and in the darker areas I also added in the Transparent Oxide Red. So in the description here I will put a full list of my paint colors that I have on the palette. So let's take a look at Bouguereau's beautiful lips as compared to how the painting of the lips I'm doing are coming along. There's still quite a lot of refinement that needs to happen. Each little transition throughout the lips needs to be noticeable but not completely noticeable. I really want those areas where it's rolling into the mouth to go into the shadows slowly and with new steps of a different color each time. I'm not going to just drag the color blending it in towards the lip area. So and as it rolls out away from the inside of the mouth and I want to show that with more steps of color and I like to use a little bit more saturation as I'm rolling towards a shadow area so you'll see little nips of a brighter red in those parts of the lip. And then of course the lighter areas are going to have the lightest red colors.
So a way to not have hard edges is to take the same value for the skin tone color that the darker lip area is rolling towards and use that same value but just a different skin tone color next to it and then your transition won't be hard but it'll look like the lips rolling into the skin into that side. If you look at Bouguereau's bottom right lip and you squint at it a little bit, the two areas where the jaw and the lip meet, they're different colors but the values are very close together and that's how you get that soft edge moving from the lip to the skin. Okay, I've got the first pass of the lips in. Now I'm gonna go back over them and refine all the transitions. I use a very light touch here. It's just a really slight movement of paint. I'm trying to use a bit thicker paint as I apply, especially in the light areas. But the transitional refinements are very small adjustments. If you'd like to watch a couple of the other Bouguereau master copies that I've done, I will have a playlist at the end of the video that you can click on and go right to the next Bouguereau master copy. So this is a sped up video. I'm not showing you every single brush stroke, but for the most part, I am continuing to refine every area that's already been painted from the eyes to the nose to the mouth. I'm continuously refining the areas, looking for drawing mistakes, trying to correct transitions. Maybe I have the wrong skin, co skin tone color in an area and I'm going to make those adjustments all along the whole time that I'm painting the portrait. So just because I've completed an area doesn't mean that I'm not gonna be going back over it at any given time. If I see something's wrong in an area, I'm gonna go back in and correct it as soon as I see it. I'm not gonna wait. So in a more classical approach to painting, uh, you're typically gonna start with a drawing stage, usually uh, charcoals used and then some sort of fixative so that you can paint on top of the drawing with the second stage, which is known as first painting, also called the block-in stage. So once that is dry, then you go back in for your third step, which is the second painting, and it's also called the dead coloring stage. This is when you establish values and you're not really concerned about correct colors at this point. So then you let that dry and then you go back in for your final painting, 
which is an, a refinement stage where you are putting down uh, exact correct colors for the skin tones and you're always through all the stages making sure that you're correcting any uh, anatomy and uh, getting the drawing correct if you see a problem but the way that I paint I've kind of combined all three of the first stages from the classical approach into one so I've taken Richard Schmidt's selective start and that's just how I like to paint it's more free and fun for me um, so with this master copy as I'm coming to the end and I, I did let it dry for a couple days and then I went back and looked at it uh, I realized that I wanted to go over it again and have a kind of a refinement stage so this is the first time I've done this I I did my selective start I really put the brush strokes down that I wanted and the correct colors the best I could and left it and then so with the refinement stage what I'm going to be doing is mixing up a new palette uh, doing some examination of the colors compared to the reference seeing where I need to make any corrections and I'm going to go back over it and just really carefully refine areas uh, <laughs> So this is a new approach for me and really you should just kind of find the style of painting that works for you. You shouldn't have to feel like you're stuck in a box and you must follow every step a certain way. You, you want to do what feels good to you and gives you the end result that you're really seeing in your mind. So that's what I'm going to do here. All right, I've put the painting so far and the reference from Bougaro's Psych into Photoshop side by side. And I'm looking carefully at the same areas with the color picker. So Bougaro's color feels, fills the color wheel and then my color's on top. So right there you can see mine was a little bit darker. With this color, it's a little bit darker and more neutral. My color's darker. So I'm seeing that I've painted the light side of the face a little bit too dark and it's looking like the shadow areas are a little bit too dark under the nose. So the lip area a little bit too gray. It needs a little bit more pink in it. The values seem pretty close, but it was too gray. And here again, uh, too gray. The value's pretty good, but the color needs to be pinker. Again, that was pretty close. So I've got... Um, Titanium white, yellow ochre, cad red light, vermilion, uh, transparent oxide brown. I've got the manganese blue and Van Dyke brown on the palette here. And I'm just going to mix up some colors that I feel like are missing on my skin tones. And it's a good place to start. Now, as I'm painting, I know for a fact that I'll be mixing some colors on the fly. As I'm laying them down on the canvas, I'll see what adjustments I need to make. But I like to have some pre-mixes on my palette to get started. I find that helpful. So I'm going to be using Velasquez Medium by Rublev. This is a great medium. So it's what it's going to do is make some of the more opaque paint transparent. Not super transparent, but more transparent than it would be without it. Uh, it's something that the old masters use. It's got a bit of chalk in it and somehow the chalk reacts with the paint and the oils and makes the opaque paints transparent. So I can feel a little bit more free, a little less scared about putting them on top of my already dry painting. And it'll let some of the other colors that are already down kind of show through since it is transparent. And I just use it kind of on the fly as well. I don't mix it into all my piles. I just dip into it as needed. Uh, some areas I'll leave more opaque while other areas I'll want to make them more transparent.
So after analyzing the colors in my painting compared to the original, I felt like I needed to add more yellows and peach colors into the skin. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm, the values were pretty good as we moved down into the jaw area and the chin, but I needed to make the light areas a tad lighter. So not only is it more yellow, but it's also a little bit lighter. So I'm leaving some of the original Selective Start brush strokes because I like the spontaneous bravura type brush strokes from that beginning stage. But the other areas like the cheeks, the highlight area of the nose, the more subtle refined areas, those are really going to be worked and put colors laid down on top of them so that it's extremely refined and soft. But the combination of the two initial wet on wet brush strokes combined with the more refined indirect wet paint onto dry paint areas, I think it's going to make a nice uh, combination so that the painting's got some interesting textures for the viewer to see. So in a past video, I talked about the six painting questions that I keep on my easel and I ask myself these questions anytime I feel like my painting's not heading in the direction I see in my mind. So one of the questions, the first one is, is the correct values being painted? Uh, then the next question is, do you have the correct colors? Then the third question is, do you have the correct chroma? And then the fourth question you ask yourself, are your transitions being painted correctly? Uh, your fifth question you ask is the edges, are they painted correctly? And then the sixth question I ask myself, is the drawing correct? So as I worked my way through these questions, as I was looking at the uh, initial painting, um, I realized that the, the color was a little off in some areas and the chroma was off in some areas. I felt like the values were pretty close, but uh, question two and three really uh, had me needing to make adjustments and then once I was making those adjustments then I had to do some uh, transitional correction as well but overall asking myself these questions helped me to fix the problems that I were seeing with my painting if you want to get these questions just jump on to my website shellyjcox.com go to the bottom of the first page hit the link and you'll get your free question guide And with painting the hair, I like to always make sure that the part of the face where the forehead meets into the hairline, 
I'm painting wet into wet. So the area of the forehead, I put the wet paint down and then I brought the hair back into the wet paint. You want those edges to be soft. You don't want them to be hard. And it helps if the paint on the forehead is wet when you pull in the little area of the hair so you get the hairline nice and soft. So I'm seeing that I need some further refinement around the bottom of the eye area. So we're gonna go ahead and put that little color notes and transitional refinements through that area. I gotta say, I really am enjoying this refinement stage. It's quite relaxing. I haven't found the answer to this question yet, but I've always wondered how long it took uh, Bouguereau to paint a face, for instance. Did he spend hours and days in the refinement stage? Let me know if you know. I could see myself just getting lost in this stage and staying here for a, re a really long time. But I only allowed myself a day to do the refinement stage. And then she's complete. So here she is. Um, Shelly J. Cox version of the Psyche from Bouguereau. I'm really pleased with the way it came out. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one where I use what I learned from this master copy in the new painting of Tea with Alice.